Hi guys, and in this quick tutorial, we're gonna be looking at creating one of these nice seamless backgrounds and the associated lights with it. One of the things that you're often asked is how do you present models in 3D on a nice sort of photographic background? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at producing one of these quite simple setups for you guys to use with your models, okay? So I'm just gonna create a new scene. Now, if you've watched any of my other tutorials thus far, you may have seen me do this already, um, but it is relatively straightforward. Um, so to get the main backdrop, I'm going to use a spline, okay, and an extrude nerves. So just going to one of the side views, okay, I'm just gonna create myself, okay, a spline, and I'm gonna give myself that nice curve at the back, okay, making sure that it's relatively simple. Just using this grid here, uh, to kind of guide where my point's going to go. So I'm just going to put that all the way up there, press escape to finish my spline, okay, then I might just grab that and extend that out. So what we have here is we have a nice flat back wall, a nice flat floor, and a nice curvature along there. That stops there from being any sort of nasty corners when you're using the lights and the cameras and stuff in 3D. So just nipping back to my 3D view, Okay, I'm going to create myself an extrude nerves. Okay, so up there, just grab myself an extrude and then drag and drop the spline into it. So at the moment, it's trying to extrude in that direction, which I don't want to, which is no good for me. Okay, so I'm just going to zero that out. Don't worry about its reaction to start with. And then I'm going to make quite a large sort of extrusion in that direction. Okay, and there you go. There we have this nice curved sort of background. Obviously, depending on the scene and stuff that you are going to set up and the size of what it is that you are going to produce, you're going to need to adjust that. I mean, that can easily be done using the spline and just increasing its height that way, and maybe its floor using the splines that way. As long as you don't make it editable, you will be all right. Okay, so that's the backdrop. Like I say, relatively fast, really quick. Okay, so just going to zoom in. Maybe I do want to put that back at 1500 and then I can just shuffle my camera along a bit there. Okay, and that's nice so that I know that none of that is now going to be in shot. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create myself something to, you know, model as it were. And one of the nicest things to use actually is a sphere because of all of the curves that it has on it. Okay, so I'm just going to get that into position. Okay, I'm gonna use my side views and front views just to make sure that it's not going through the floor. Okay, you can see the black line there. That's where my floor is and that's where my sphere is. That's fine. Okay, so that's nicely in the middle. Okay, so that's not too bad. And if I render, everything looks really flat and dull. Okay, this is because we don't have any light in it yet. Okay, and lighting is one of the biggest keys to making stuff look more realistic, more grounded and seated in a 3D scene. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through creating some lights. So the first one I want to create is an area light. Okay, this is our main light. And so I'm gonna call that main. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it into position. This is where you are going to want your main sort of area of light to come from. Okay, and an area light is good because it projects light from an area as you would expect. Okay, so this is the main source. So if you were in a studio, this is like the main source of light that you are going to be getting. I'm just gonna zoom out of that a little bit. Okay, make sure it's there, make sure it's pointing. Okay, and maybe increase the area a little bit, just so you can sort of get that feeling that it's coming from there. And you can see that if you move that around, it changes the ambient sort of lights and the directions of the highlights on that sphere quite nicely. Okay, so that's the main light. And if I render that, whilst it looks better, it still looks quite flat. And one of the reasons for that is uh, shadows. Okay, so with my main light on, okay, selected, I'm just going to go to area shadows. It's one of the better ones for giving realistic shadows. And now if I render, there we go, you can see that we have this nice shadow being cast by the sphere. Okay, the problem with this setup, okay, the next thing we need to add is some light because the other side, 
because we are losing detail around the right hand side okay and this is where we need to use some fill lights okay and those fill lights are given to us by a couple of spotlights so I'm just going to create a spotlight and you can see that it makes it over there at zero okay that's no good for me there what I want is one relatively close in front with a nice broad angle so that it is whilst it's a spotlight it is in a particular direction okay and it's aiming towards that central point that I will be using okay so if I go there there we go whilst it's there and that's not too bad it is rather bright okay now traditionally this light is ever so slightly blue okay it's just one of those sort of fill lights that just gives that little bit of tint of color even to the point where that might be a bit too much but its intensity its brightness is really quite low because largely it's there just to fill in some of the light issues we've got going on here at the front okay and again you want shadows on so i'm going to create that and i need another one so i'm just going to make life easy on myself and i'm going to command drag myself a second one there Okay, and I'm going to position that more to the right hand side, okay, so that it fills in some of that back lighting issue that we've got. And again, when it comes to colour, this one is normally ever so slightly yellowy brown, okay. So just to give that sort of warm sense and lower that down. And now if I come into here, okay, you can see that it starts to fill in that detail just that little bit more. It might be a case that I need to increase the brightness of these ones a little bit. So if I up to that intensity, you can see that that um, central part starts to come out a little bit better. And now if I do the same here, there you go. It means that we're not necessarily losing some detail, but we are around the bottom. So that one, I might just lower, okay, so that it's getting that detail around the bottom and now if I render can you see that it's a much more realistic illumination and that we are getting much better lighting okay I might just adjust the position of that one so that it's a little bit more to that side okay because the main lights doing quite a bit to illuminate this let's pick out that sort of side here okay and now we can use a color okay to put on our backdrop so just create myself a new material okay but I will always get rid of the specular I want this to be a nice flat color along the back okay and a white nice bright white will do that okay sometimes you can control how bright the scene is in general by creating another light and in the scene I showed you earlier I do have one and this one is just a standard omni light okay the trouble is with an omni light is that it is incredibly bright everywhere okay but that's sometimes really useful okay certainly if you just bring that down a bit okay so that its intensity is nowhere near as strong as the others it will illuminate the scene and the backdrop for you okay so I might just bring some of those back down now I have that in here and you can see that it will just get rid of that gradient a little bit for me along the back okay cool this one we don't want shadows on because I don't want this to be a light source that's cast too much um, but it just gives us a little bit more depth and a little bit less gradient on the back okay so now if I render okay we've got this nice seated sort of ball here so what I can also do is give a material to the sphere. Okay, so I'm going to use standard white one there. I'm just going to whack its specular up a little bit, make it a tad shiny and apply that to it. Okay, so now if I render, okay, we've got this nice sort of feel to that ball. Maybe I'm just going to increase that a tad. Okay, just going to check its position, that's why okay yeah, there we go um, you can see that there we go that's having much bigger effect on that sideboard now um, I've moved it into the correct position so another thing 
that a lot of people find, as I've mentioned in some of my other tutorials, that makes some of these scenes really feel realistic is adding a couple of render settings. So going up to my render settings and the two that we use a lot is ambient occlusion and global illumination. Okay, so now if I render, okay, as before, certainly when you use these things, it takes a little bit longer to render, but it does give you more realistic um, and more detailed lighting. Okay, so there we go. Again, that was another quick tutorial for you. I hope that gives you some help in presenting some of your 3D models. If you have any questions or any comments, do please let us know, and I will catch you next time.